Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to 2023, the first live show of the year. Hopefully you had a good holiday season. It was nice to take a little bit of a break during uh, the run-up to Christmas and New Year's. Lots of stuff going on. I think I'm going to do this every year, take a break in December, and then also take a break for July and August. Uh, it's hard to schedule these when there's so much going on. Those are two busy times of the year, uh, the holiday season and then in the summer. Uh, so a couple of things we need to get uh, done here. First of all, don't forget to check out carcostcanada.com. If you're looking for a new car, that's where you find the dealer's cost, what the dealer actually paid for the car, any rebates, discounts, secret rebates. It's all there at carcostcanada.com. You use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member, and it unlocks a bunch of searches for you. And we're going to start to see, my prediction is, in the next... Probably by around May, we're going to start to see inventories uh, starting to build up again at dealerships. And maybe, just maybe, uh, car companies and dealerships will be competing for business. We could start to see the return of rebates in a big way. If inventories pick up um, and they have not enough buyers, that's usually what happens. Um, also, what's coming up this week? On uh, Wednesday, we're putting out the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Um, just love driving Alfa Romeos. Now, I know they're not the most reliable in comparison to a lot of other vehicles, but unless you've driven one, it's kind of hard to get across why they're so special, but they are special. Also, uh, we're picking it up tomorrow, but we'll turn the video around and put it out uh, this coming Saturday, is the Chevy Bolt EUV. So there's the Bolt, and then there's the EUV, which is slightly bigger. <coughs> that one we'll be um, putting out on Saturday. Hmm. And then tomorrow, um, we're going to put out the VinFast VF6. We were down at CES. VinFast invited us down. No, we didn't get paid. We were just uh, taken down there. And we, because we, when we went to Vietnam, we only had access to one car, which was the VF8. So we took the, the uh, time to do a quick video in each of the other vehicles that'll be for sale in North America. All for the reason that if people are looking for uh, any of the VF products, as they start to come on sale, we'd at least have a video for it. Okay. We do have a few pictures. Uh, not a lot, because we did take the break. I went back just one week. If I missed your picture, feel free to send it. It's Zach at Motormouth.ca, Z-A-C-K at Motormouth.ca, or Z-A-C-K at Motormouth.ca, if you're south of the border. The first picture comes from... Uh, this is not a good one. This is from Gordon, who lives in Winnipeg, and this is his old uh, Volvo, um, uh, I was going to say VF, XC, um, XC70, so the station wagon. And uh, he plugged it in for the block heater in his detached garage. So the good news is he his garage is not attached to his house. I'm assuming an older house with the garage in the back. You go down the side of the house, and the, the garage caught on fire. The car burned, and he plugged in the block heater for the very first time with this car and uh, caught on fire. So he went out and got an SQ5 to replace it. Next up, this one is... Actually, I'll do this one first. Um, this one is from Andy, who has joined the Porsche family. He had a BMW, a 2019 540. He said the depreciation was shocking after four years. And he's moved to a Porsche, hoping it'll have less depreciation. There's a guy after my heart. He's got a Porsche. I love that. And he's also into watches. Uh, so he's got a, a Rolex Submariner on the left. Uh, he's got a new Datejust 41 in black in the center. And uh, Sorry, um, uh, Oyster Perpetual 41 in the center. And a Datejust 41 on the right in blue. The blue was the one I'd be after. All right, the uh, next picture. There's the other picture. And the last one, um, this comes from um, Sarah in Massachusetts. Got a 2023 Sportage, or in your in America, that's a Sportage. That's the Hybrid SX Prestige in Vista Blue. They also have a 20 Highlander Hybrid. The plug-in was too expensive with dealer markup, so that's great. Uh, there's one other picture I'm missing here. Uh, there it is. I think it's a great shot. So this is from uh, Fahim, who's a fellow Canadian who shares uh, my passion for station wagons. He thought he'd send a photo of his, tw of his Volkswagen Passat Alltrack. 
um, in Australia. Great shot. Australia, what a place. And uh, we don't get the Passat wagon, and we certainly don't get the Passat wagon all track. And um, I think he's, he, I'm not even sure what video we did. We talked about what cars we wish we got. The Passat um, wagon is one that I wish we got. Okay. So those are the pictures. Uh, same thing. If you want to get them in, Zach at motormouth.ca. Okay. Another thing to consider is if um, you just have to, have to, have to get a question answered, you can always do a super chat and it just brings it to my attention. All right. The first question goes to uh, Sanjeeb. How are you? Any chance you will get a 2023 Infiniti QX60? So that's Basically, the QX60 is the Infinity version of the Armada. Have to wait and see if we get that. It's not in the press fleet. Um, will you be driving the Kia Sorento SX Prestige? So I think that's the turbo, the one you're talking about. Um, <coughs> there is a video of the uh, Sorento that we did with the turbo, um, and not much has changed. It's really the same vehicle. So you go if you go on the channel and do a search for Sorrento, you'll find that. Um, and the Subaru Forester Wilderness and your Bronco. I'll keep those in mind. Here's a Happy New Year from Evan Katz. Thank you very much. Uh, don't think I've ever heard Zach called Zachary. No? It's not my real name anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. Happy New Year, Zach. How is Vegas? Yeah, we were in Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show, and um, it's it's so overwhelming. The Consumer Electronics Show is the largest uh, show that they have in Las Vegas throughout the year. And they have a new convention center that's attached through a tunnel to the old convention center, and it's absolutely massive. <coughs> they have one huge hall that's dedicated to automotive and transportation they had a massive john deere tractor there they had an electric caterpillar dump truck inside so there were some really cool things there but um we didn't have enough time to go around and see everything but at least we got to wander around a little bit but um not as much as we would have liked <clears throat> Welcome back, Zach. What was the most gimmicky car-related product you saw in Vegas? To be honest with you, we didn't have much time. We were busy shooting, um, we were working, and we didn't get enough time to walk around. So it was a bit disappointing. We were invited to go down for CES, and they brought us in um, almost two days before. So we went to the show, and there was a bit confusing. They have at uh, some hotels, press conferences, but the main show itself wasn't open. We actually went on the shuttle bus over to the convention center and they said, well, you can't come in until tomorrow. And then we went the next day and it was absolutely jammed. Um, so it was a bit of a missed opportunity, to be honest with you. Happy New Year. You said in a review that you would pick up a GTI over a Civic hatch. But what about VW's quality versus that of Honda? How long would the GT last if you plan to keep it? Well, listen, um, I talk about this often in our videos. There's something that you have to consider when you're buying something that's sporty and fun to own. There's the passion and the pleasure that the vehicle brings to you. And then there's the reliability and maybe the misery that a vehicle brings to you. And often, the passion and the pleasure outweigh the misery. So sure, a Volkswagen GTI isn't going to be as uh, reliable, you would think, as a Honda Civic. There are no guarantees. But I like the car so much, I would put up with some inconveniences if the vehicle had to go back in for some repairs or something needed done, especially if it's under warranty. I would just take the car and enjoy it. The way I always try to explain to people is if you're really hung up about reliability lease the car for three years have it under full warranty drive the car if the car has been problem free or maybe just a couple of minor little things and you're happy with the vehicle i call it the three year long test drive so lease the car for three years if at the end of the three years you like it 
you can just pay out their remaining amount and then keep the car and there you go you've got your car and at that time also at the end of the initial warranty you can get it uh, extended um, for usually a couple more years uh, through their certified pre-owned um, program so um, back to your question about the Honda um, over the GTI so the Honda Civic hatch doesn't have as much power as the GTI even the Honda Civic SI doesn't have as much power as the GTI that vehicle is only sold as a manual if you want to have an automatic transmission the Civic hatch has a continuously variable transmission not what I would consider in a sporty car and their GTI has a dual clutch it's got much more power it's got 40 roughly 40 more horsepower than the Civic SI it's just got more clout um, I like the shape of the GTI I think it's a nice looking car it would be the one I would choose for the reasons I just described I'm willing to put up with some inconvenience because I would get more out of it that's why happy new year would you choose a Prius or a RAV4 hybrid I would choose a RAV4 hybrid the Prius has gone up in price um, trying to remember off the top of my head it's either 38 to 43,000 or 36 to 43,000 the problem is a RAV4 XLE which is a nicely equipped middle trim of the RAV4 is thousands of dollars less than the top trim of the Prius and you've got a more practical footprint a conventional crossover vehicle easy to live with power lift gate all the features uh, that you really need in a vehicle and now for 2023 they've added wireless Android and Apple um, so you get a lot of features in the RAV4 hybrid and it's less expensive so but if uh, if, uh, if the sexy new sleek look of the Prius is what gets you going then that's going to be hard to compete with you really have to want a, a crossover over a sedan okay Alrighty, 200 people on board and 41 thumbs up. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Happy New Year to you as well. What are your thoughts on a used 2017 EcoBoost Mustang? Um, so 2015 was the year, from what I remember, where they, yeah, they brought in the latest generation of the Mustang with the EcoBoost so that engine had been out for a couple of years and the EcoBoost has been around for a while um, I don't really have any strong opinions on it I haven't done a lot of research into the reliability of that engine with the Mustang I would suggest you go and look up some probably one of the easiest things to do is to join a Mustang Facebook group so when you're in Facebook you just look on the search tab and you go in there Mustang owners group and there'll be probably dozens of them and you can read about other people's uh, situation you can also um, ask questions on there uh, they're free to join uh, sometimes there's a moderator that just you know um, make sure you're not a robot or something and then you can get in there and ask some questions which is what I would do I'm not a huge fan when I drove the EcoBoost with the 10-speed automatic which is the newest setup the automatic in my opinion uh, does a better job with the higher torque v8 than it does with the four cylinder but but there might have been some software upgrades to the vehicle that have been done since it was sold so there you go here's boston ma good to have you back uh boston has a, a gti we'd love to hear his thoughts on you know if, if he still has it i think he still does here's harpreet how are you doing today i'm doing well glad to hear it doing great I got a bit of a cough well I didn't get a bit of a cough after we came back from the LA Auto Show I got this cough and it just wouldn't go away coughing 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 and quite a few of my neighbors have it and they said it takes like six or eight weeks to go away so there you go welcome back Zach and happy new year to you both thank you very much uh, happy new year uh, great to have you back appreciate it um, any updates with the personal fleet issues or maintenance where do you take your Porsches any good private places well um, I do have a bit of um, let me see it's not on this computer I, I no no update on on the car um, I actually have to call the Porsche dealer because our 
Porsche Cayenne diesel is still under warranty. Got a bit of a leak in the back lift gate and I'm seeing some mold on the carpet. So I got to get that in to get it checked. It's still under warranty. Um, so that's something hopefully that isn't too hard to figure out. The thing I'm most excited about is that uh, for older Porsche Cayennes, the first generation really from 2003 up to 2010, so the first generations of the Cayenne, um, they have now made available a Porsche head unit. It's called PCCM, Porsche Classic Communications Module, and our management. And basically what it is, is the radio, you, you take that out and it's a, a, an approved port, it's a Porsche part and you get the new one and you, you plug it in. Now they say it's best to have it um, done at the dealer and I will get it done at Porsche Center Vancouver. I've already talked to them about it. I'm hoping to do a quick video on it too. Uh, but what you get with that is from Porsche, you get a Porsche head unit for the older cars that didn't have Bluetooth. So you get Bluetooth, you get Apple and Android, which is amazing. Um, and then it adds a, a microphone so you can do phone calls. And then you can plug your phone in, you can stream music. All the stuff you get with a modern head unit, you can now get in older uh, Porsche vehicles. So if you have an older Porsche, <coughs> uh, 911s up to 996s can have this put in. Um, and also the Cayenne. What we're hoping is then they'll add in the newer uh, Porsches, um, like our diesel, that doesn't have Apple and Android, and maybe they'll do that as well. So that's what I'm up to. Um, any good private places? Um, if you really want to know, send me an email, and I'll, I don't want to talk too much about it here, but I can suggest some places to go. Uh, hey, Josh. Um, Happy New Year, Zach. Just got back from Israel. Nice. Hopefully uh, the weather was good. Nice at this time of year. Uh, noticed tons of small Kona-type SUVs that would be that do really well in our market from Kia, Toyota, etc. Why do you think they don't bring them? Um, well, first of all, there are different uh, crash tests and things, safety issues, and, and vehicles are certified for certain markets. <clears throat> I would suggest probably that the vehicles were brought in specifically for the European market and maybe some other world markets and not for the North American market. So the crash worthiness of the vehicle has to be adjusted. And then also, you probably, now you could confirm this, a lot of those European, and I'll include Israel in that because, you know, you're it's just off the Mediterranean there. They bring in probably a lot of diesel um, engines for these vehicles. And they just don't sell those in North America. I mean, you still see when you go to Europe, a high concentration of diesel vehicles. So I suspect that some of the, I don't know which ones you're referring to, are not sold here for that reason. But you're right. There's a lot of, uh, when you get into big brands like Toyota, Honda even, and then Kia and Hyundai, <coughs> um, excuse me, they're worldwide brands and they have different vehicles depending on the marketplace. A lot of times it does come down to size. We certainly like to have bigger vehicles in North America. <coughs> Here's Rex with a super chat. Uh, thanks to Zach and Andrea. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. No question. That's okay. Let me see if um, Boston Ma replied about his GTI. Oh, here he is with his GTI. My 2013 GTI has been reliable other than common issues happening. 180,000 kilometers and it's uh, all about maintenance. Depends on how you service the car. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you keep up with service. So there's that cough I was telling you about. It's just annoying. So I don't have COVID. It's just this other flu bug that went around and everybody seemed to get it. So thanks for the feedback, Boston Ma, on that. And Rex, thank you for the super chat. All right. Um, with interest rates so high, here in New Brunswick, just about 10% for anything used. Will more stock of cars be enough? Well, you have uh, two things happening. One is that uh, used car prices are coming down. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. And you would think that um, inventories would start to build up. And with in, in interest rates being so high, there's only so much purchasing power that people have. So that is why you're seeing the wholesale values of used vehicles 
coming down and they're going to continue to come down as um, high interest rates take place because the thing with interest rates they really affect the used car market incredibly there's really nowhere to hide if you want to buy a five-year-old car and it's not done through um, you know a main dealer like it's a ford sold at a ford dealer if they don't have any used car ability to finance that uh, through their finance arm then you have to go to the bank say you find a five-year-old ford escape and you want to buy it and it's uh, it's uh, on sale for twenty thousand dollars. You go to the bank and you say, "I need to, I need a loan for twenty thousand dollars. I want to get a five year old Ford Escape." And they're going to say to you, "Well, it's ten percent, and that's expensive. That's a lot of money every month. So that will affect the prices of used vehicles. The difference with new cars is that as inventories hopefully start to build up at dealer lots, and they need to move product, which is I'm looking forward." through my uh, you know, telescope, I think that's gonna start happening. As the economy starts to slow down and inventory start to build up, we will probably see some kind of incentives come into play. And car companies are gonna hold off on incentives as long as they can. But as soon as one company starts to layer on incentives, then they typically all follow suit. And one incentive that is attractive to people, buying a new car in a high in, in interest rate environment, is reducing the cost of borrowing the money. So you would see them, say, say the um, a cost to borrow the money is 10%, they might have it for five or four or even 3%, something like that. You'll start to see those uh, popping up in advertising if we start to see inventories build in a substantial way. But we're not seeing that yet. We're starting to see it creeping up, but we're not getting lots filled the way they used to be. But I think looking down the road, we're going to start to see that. And that's why carcostcanada.com is so vital. When you start to see those vehicle inventories increase, then you want to know what the, vehicle, the dealer paid. Then you want to know what any secret interest rates are or anything like that. So sign up using the promo code MOTORMOUTH and then you can start doing your searches. <clears throat> Um, what would you be your choice? GV70 2.5, Lexus NX, Mercedes, Mercedes Benz GLC, or the Q5? Okay, I'll give you the kind of high and low points on each. Uh, GLC is just about to be replaced. Even though there's a new one coming, you can see search on uh, the channel. We did a little preview video of it. Um, it's coming. Uh, the timing on it, we're not sure, but it will be. Uh, arriving sometime this year. So the GLC, even though it's the oldest of the bunch, the current model, the one you can go and buy today, is actually still a great product. So uh, I think it's a good all-rounder. Same with the Q5. It's been out in the marketplace for a long time. Um, it too is a good all-rounder. Uh, then you get into the GV70 that offers a lot of value and the 2.5 liter engine is the one to get with the GV70. Uh, the price of the 3.5 turbo, I think they've kind of priced themselves out of the market and there's a lot of vehicle there for the money. Now, that brings us to the um, Lexus NX. If I was buying, I would probably want to get uh, the 350H. That's the hybrid. In my opinion, that's the best NX to buy. Um, you get you know, a fairly lively drive. So it's got a larger electric motor in it than you would get, say, with the RAV4. So you get a little bit more snap with that larger electric motor and a smaller package. Um, really nice, compliant ride. Nicely finished on the inside. Nothing too extravagant, but a good all-rounder. Of the bunch, that one is the smallest. Uh, the GV70 is really quite big, and the Audi and the Mercedes are just, as I mentioned, good all-rounders. So if you're looking to save money at the pumps, the um, the NX Hybrid is the one to get, the 350H. Thanks, thanks to following the government talking points, you guys like to travel. Can you travel to Africa to the cobalt mine and make a video about the child slaves? Thank you. No, we're not going to Africa to do videos on... There's lots of people who have already done videos on the mining practices that are happening in Africa. Uh, we review new cars. That's what we do. Uh, is if you have an issue with the way batteries are made and the way cobalt is mined in Africa, don't buy an electric car. We just review cars. Was gonna get a Kia Carnival, but another channel uh, dissected engine 
and its concerns that it's an old engine, not in a good way. What are your thoughts? Well, it's the 3.3 liter. It's not that old. Like it's like the 3.3 has been around for a while, but it's not that old. Um, I'm not sure I totally agree with that. Uh, it doesn't have the three and a half liter engine, but uh, one thing about the Carnival is way cheaper than everything else. The Carnival is way cheaper. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, shy away from that. I'm a big fan of the Carnival. I just noticed that some car manufacturers are starting to put orange and ugly reflectors above the front wheel wells. Is there a new Canadian US requirement to have these reflectors on cars now? There always were. Um, you always did have to have um, reflectors on the side of the car. What you would often see is the, is the headlamp curves around. Actually, you can, see, you can see the way that the headlamp curves around here um, and you get your reflector there. Uh, sometimes they put a reflector um, in the wheel arch, on the wheel arch, and it's just a small, I think there's one there. Yeah, there's a reflector right there. Um, that is mandated that you have to have some kind of reflection on the side of the vehicle. Because this, for example, this one doesn't have the headlamp or the lights that go around the side, that needs to be added there. So it, it's, it is all part of the, um, you know, the process to get a vehicle certified. Okay. Uh, let's go down to another super chat. Hey, Zach, I have a 19 X3 with wireless Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto. How do I get it? I feel it's already there. It just needs activation. I don't believe it is in the head unit. There are lots of dongles and things that you can buy aftermarket units. You can add Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to pretty much any head unit. <coughs> you just have to have... Um, a way to plug uh, the dongle into the head unit. So if you have a USB port or you can put it in the back of the head unit that is available, what I would do is I would type, type in and search uh, BMW X3, Apple and Android uh, like retrofit and you'll find that and you should be able to get it in there. It is annoying that you have brands that don't include one but do the other. The interesting thing is that some new BMW cars do have it and some still do not. So it is, it is frustrating. Um, Porsche was the same way for a while. They had Apple and no Android. Now they've added Android to their new vehicles. But it is a bit of a bummer. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and thank you for the super chat. Great car, by the way. I love the X3. But it can be done. If you have the willpower and you're willing to, to try and figure out how to connect the, the wireless dongle, you can get that into your radio for sure. As I mentioned, that's why um, I'm getting this new head unit for our older Cayenne, is that now I can have Apple and Android and all the latest functionality in a new head unit. And by the way, the screen is bigger, so that's good. Uh, here's Josh again. Uh, tons of beautiful Chinese TVs also. 100% vehicle tax on all cars in Israel. Wow. That's a lot, man. 100% tax. There's somebody say we don't get a Passat, period. You're right. We don't get a Passat. We don't get the Passat wagon. I like that Passat wagon. <clears throat> hey, Jack. Just uh, Zach, just transitioned from full black car to white one with black accents. I feel like white going to be interesting to maintain, especially during those Quebec winters. What's your experience? <coughs> well, each color has its own pluses and minuses. Um, we have um, a white cayenne with black accents. And really, with any car, it comes down to your dedication to keep it clean. Ours is ceramic coated. So I have now gravitated to having a power washer in my garage and um, I pull down the laneway, our car's all dirty, and I have a power washer with one of those foaming things and it sprays foam all over the car. I just let that sit for um, a few minutes and then I power wash it all off. And because of the ceramic coating and because the soap is sitting on top of it, for the most car part, it gets the car, you know, 95% clean. And then every few washes, I get out there and I wash it by hand and get it super, super clean. But just for little touch-ups, it seems to do the trick. <clears throat> so not really gonna be helpful to you 
in Quebec in the middle of the winter because as soon as you spray the car, it'll freeze. But um, if you're worried about, I, I would say white is 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 no is better than black. That's for sure. But um, probably like a silver car like this would probably be the best. But we've I've never owned a white car before. I never wanted a white car. The car we have was available because it's a diesel Cayenne. We bought the car, not the color. And um, and but now that we have a white one, I'm quite happy with it. I'll take it over black. I've had black cars. I've had lots of black cars. I hate black cars. Hey, Zach, so glad to have these back. Loving my new Macan S. Week two. Nice. Good for you. Uh, sure does like gasoline compared to my 540. Haha. -ha. Worth it, though. So be curious. Um, oh, it's a Macan S. Yeah, but that 2.9 liter engine is spectacular. I tell you why you're using more gas. Because you're enjoying the motor. That engine is spectacular. So that's the 375 horsepower, 2.9 liter twin turbo V6. Hell yeah, that's a lot of fun. That's why you're using more gas, because it's more fun to drive. Is Toyota RAV4 2019 hybrid still a good in comparison to the current model? It's the same as the current model. The only difference between a 2019 and the current car is in 2022, on the top trims of hybrids, uh, or RAV4s, they added slightly different headlamp, not on all trims, only the higher end trims, got a slightly different headlamp. So no change really there uh, for 2023. So the models that are just going to be arriving now, they do have a new infotainment system. So the back end of the infotainment system is updated and you now get wireless Apple and Android. So that's a nice upgrade. But the reality is the vehicle, the um, the hybrid system and everything else is the same. So there's no difference other than uh, just a few little uh, tweaks here and there. So if you can find one that's in good shape, go for it. All right, we have 313 people on board. 111 thumbs up. If you guys can smash the thumbs up, would be great. As Boston Ma says, hit that like button. Thank you. <clears throat> How does the VF6 look? So that's this car here. It's interesting because uh, the video will drop tomorrow at noon. So we did a video on the VF7. That's sort of their compact crossover, available with front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, and fully electric. The VF9 is the seven-passenger, three-row, full electric uh, from VinFast that I think is just overpriced. It's $105,000, roughly. And I just don't know why anybody would spend over $100,000 on a brand-new brand uh, in the marketplace. Now, sure, there's not a lot of three-row electric SUVs, <clears throat> but I think they just have a lot of nerve charging over a hundred grand for a brand that nobody knows about. This one, the VF6, is the one I'm the most interested in. Because if you know me, I'm always going on about there's no inexpensive electric cars. So the vehicle we're getting this week, the Chevy Bolt, is one of a couple that are actually good value. In, in, in fact, the Chevy Bolt is the best value electric car, period. Nothing can touch it. Over 400 kilometers of range. It's um, it's now being updated with the new battery system. It comes in the Canadian market anyway with just one well-equipped trim. And then when you get the government side, they're giving tax credits. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this sucks. Maybe I should have waited till next week. Or in the case of Canada giving rebates, it becomes an inexpensive vehicle. So this is the same kind of thing. Subcompact, electric crossover, front wheel drive only, and hopefully is going to be fairly cheap. <clears throat> so this one I liked a lot. Further to the comment on the old V6 and the Carnival, it's time Lexus also replaced the V6 and the IS. Putting the B58 engine in the IS would be a great addition. <clears throat> is that is the B58, is that the inline six um, from the Supra? I think that's what you're talking about. My theory is that the IS is going to be replaced. And the updates they did to it uh, last year, two years ago, were just a holdover. <clears throat> 
Here's Beneth Wang. Glad to see the live show on my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you. Did you or Andrea win any money in Vegas? Okay, I'm Scottish. I don't I don't gamble. I did, however, put a one dollar in a slot machine, and um, I lost. I lost. Well, anyway, I after I was done, I had forty seven cents left over. So Vegas isn't going to get rich on a guy like me. I don't really gamble. I don't gamble. I put a dollar in. That's all I did. <clears throat> and by the way, I I loathe Las Vegas. I just hate the place. Andrea likes it more than me. I just can't stand Las Vegas. If I never go to Las Vegas again, I'll be happy. Everybody goes, oh, but they have such great restaurants. There's great restaurants everywhere. If I was going to go away for a three-day weekend, I would much rather go to like to Austin, Texas or Nashville or Washington, D.C. or New York City or Chicago or something like that. Las Vegas wouldn't even be in my top 50 places I'd want to go. Um, yeah, there's there's... Oh, but there's great shows. Yeah, but you can go and see all kinds of different things. Great restaurants. I don't know. I just don't get it. Everything's fake. The people look desperate. <laughs> it's I don't know. For me, it's just low rent. I don't I don't get it myself. And holy crap is expensive. Like Las Vegas is expensive, man. You get a bottle of water, it's like it's like six dollars. It's ridiculous. Get a beer. Went up for a beer. It's fourteen dollars for a beer. That's those are American dollars. It's insane. So I don't know why people go there. <clears throat> oh, that's just me. I don't like the place. If I didn't have to go there for work, I would never go again. Um. All right, we have another super chat. Uh, what are your thoughts on Vegas? Can't stand the place. And if you live in Las Vegas, good for you. Not for me. Super Chat, when will you have the Toyota Crown to drive? Also, trying to decide what is the better value quality for the price, the Lexus RX or the Kia Sportage? I had only Toyotas in the past for long-term quality. Well, um, still waiting to get our hands on the Toyota Crown. One is coming in what we call our press fleet. It is going to be shipped to us. Hopefully, we're going to get it soon. Uh, we're also waiting on the Sequoia. We're waiting on a, a few Toyota products. Okay, so you're comparing uh, a Lexus RX with a Kia Sportage. These are totally different categories. One is a luxury brand, uh, or you could say a premium brand, and Kia isn't. Um, the Lexus is brand new. The Sportage or Sportage is all new as well, but they're really quite different. Um, if you're looking at value, then the Kia is going to offer you more value. But if you're looking at long-term ownership, if you are somebody who buys a vehicle and keeps it long-term, then you probably, as a former Toyota owner, best served to go back and buy another Toyota again. Like they've they've earned your business. Why not give them your business? <clears throat> and you can split the difference on this. You can go and get... Uh, Toyota Venza, which is kind of Lexus-like. It's built on the same platform as the Toyota RAV4, but it has a little bit more of an upscale vibe, uh, slightly different interior, and, and from our estimation, having driven all of them, a quieter ride than you would get from, say, um, a Toyota RAV4. So uh, if you can afford the RX, that's, the, that's, that's where you need to put your money because, um, you know, it's just such a... A reputable nameplate from a reputable brand and you'll have years of service out of it and then when you go to sell it or trade it in it's going to be worth lots of money nothing wrong with the Kia but it's not in the same category I would say maybe look at the Toyota Venza if you're comparing a Kia to a Toyota and you want something that's kind of Lexus like then the Venza might be the way to go Vegas is a tourist trap, yeah. Oh, here's some. This is Cam. Uh, downtown Hollywood is quite an experience as well. Oh, yeah, that's that's for sure. The seedy side of, of Los Angeles. There's even seedier parts where people are living in tents and whatever. That's happening all over the place. Um, all right, where was I?
Okay, here we go. Here's a bank person. Hey, Zach, according to you, which PHEV cars are the best in SUVs in terms of EV range and mileage? Well, that's easy. Um, the best uh, vehicle in the SUV space is the Toyota RAV4 Prime. It has the most battery uh, range right now. Uh, there are no others in the non-luxury space, even in the luxury space, that come close to that. Um, in the car space, um, yeah, so basically the, the, the winner is the Toyota RAV4 Prime. I'm trying to think of the cars. There's not a lot of PHEVs in the car space. The new Prius will be coming out uh, later this year. They don't have any official numbers on the range of that car. Uh, the current Prius is really limited. They said they're going to increase it by 50%, so that's positive. Um, so probably the Prius. Other plugins in the sedan space, there's not really anything I can think of. So, so the RAV4 Prime is the one to beat. Uh, did you see the big John Deere sprayer? Yes, we did. Got one coming this spring if it gets built. Well, that's cool. So in the middle of CES in the automotive section, they had this huge John Deere machine. I guess it's a sprayer with these huge arms that shot out each side to, to spray a field. And apparently it makes it much more efficient in spraying whatever it is, insecticides or fertilizer or whatever you're putting down on the fields. And it's just so huge and so cool. Then they had this huge caterpillar dump truck. And I said, this is every little kid's dream. Huge tractor, huge dump truck. Everybody was standing in front of the big caterpillar dump truck. These are like the huge mining trucks standing in front of the wheels that are a story and a half tall. That was kind of neat. New Year's greetings from LV. Are you, is that, is that Las Vegas? <laughs> I hope you had a splendid job in, in your handoffs. Enjoyable and informative. Thank you. When are you going to uh, review the Toyota Highlander? We have been asking. Um, there's a bunch of vehicles we're waiting to get. First is the 2023 RAV4 with the new head unit. We want to get that. Highlander's on its way. We've been told that. Uh, we do have a Forerunner. Uh, we booked it's a special anniversary edition with the, with the, um, the special uh, decal package on it. That one's coming. The Sequoia, the Crown, and then um, those are the main ones we're still waiting to get. But... Is supposedly on its way. Any news on Ionic 7? No, nothing yet. Is Mitsubishi Outlander SUV a good choice and recommended to buy in the current market? I um, really like the Outlander a lot. In fact, I would say it's the most fun to drive um, plug-in hybrid vehicle. They obviously, because it's got a large 20 kilowatt hour battery, um, the Prime, the Toyota RAV4 Prime is an 18 kilowatt hour battery, so it's got more capacity, but it doesn't have uh, the same kind of just pure EV range. What Mitsubishi did was they decided to use some of that electric power for drivability, to make the vehicle more dynamic to drive, to give you better launch, more torque, all those sorts of things. So they weighed it up. Are we going to use the battery just to eke out the most efficiency, but maybe make it a little boring to drive <coughs> or are we going to take some of that power and make it fun to drive which is what they did so I would say the Outlander PHEV is a fantastic choice you can put the car in the power mode um, to get even more out of the electric motors and it's really quite fun to drive but it doesn't have the same kind of range it's a it's a really good choice there's a video on it check it out on the channel When a PHEV with no heat pump heats the cabin, does the gas engine turn on to power the vehicle completely or does the battery continue to drive the wheels and the engine comes on only for heating? <coughs> Excuse me. So a PHEV with no heat pump relies basically on the cooling system of the vehicle or the, you know, the coolant of the system to go through a traditional um, heating system that you would get with a gasoline engine. That's how you get cabin heat. There is no electric resistance heating with those vehicles. So ones with heat pumps use less of the engine heat and more from the heat pump and ones without basically rely on the gasoline engine to warm the cabin or cool the cabin um, in hot weather. So you don't get the same kind of range. 
PHEVs are about averaging down your overall fuel cost. So in perfect uh, situations like spring and fall where it's you know 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, you don't really need much in the way of heat of cooling, it's just the perfect temperature, you're gonna get incredible fuel economy. So in those months, uh, hey, you're getting incredible fuel economy. In the cold weather, you're not gonna get as great fuel economy and maybe in the peak of summer, the same kind of thing. So you have to look at averaging over your costs throughout the year. People get really hung up on, oh, I'm using more gas here, but then I always say, well, you're gonna save money somewhere else. Um, the best is to have a vehicle with a heat pump um, just because you're using less fuel. Oh, here's Boston Ma again talking about his GTI, his 13 GTI. Bought the car six years old with 78,000 kilometers and had been well taken care of. That's basically talking about the reliability of a GTI. It really comes down to, and I really stress this, when anybody's buying a used performance kind of car, somebody on our Questions Coffee and Cars was asking about a Golf R, and I said, please get the vehicle inspected. Because typically Golf Rs and GTIs are bought by people who are driving enthusiasts. And the younger they are, the more they're likely to thrash on the car and maybe abuse it a bit. So you could get a good deal on one, but it's had, you know, they've been driving the bag off it. So it might cost you a lot more money to keep it going in the long run versus one that's been well maintained. So that's the case with any sort of performance oriented car is you're buying the previous owner's dedication to maintenance. Do you know if Hyundai is launching a van anytime soon? I haven't heard anything about that, but the Kia, Kia has the carnival. Is Toyota RAV4, you've asked that question already. I drove a Toyota RAV4 Hybrid Limited. Was okay except for a slight wheezing sound occasionally and weird noise when in reverse and lots of plastic in interior vehicle. Walked away from buying. Well, you know, it's not for everybody, but you have to remember what is the RAV4 Hybrid? The RAV4 Hybrid is the value in the vehicle space. Okay, think about this. You get what people want. Everybody wants a compact crossover. Check. Uh, Toyota, reliability. Check. Toyota, resale value. Check. Uh, Toyota Hybrid, great on saving fuel. Check. Check out the price. It starts, these are Canadian dollars because they know the market here, is $34,000. So you get all of that and you're getting 30% better fuel economy from a Toyota for 34 grand. That's what people are looking for. And then you can go up to the XLE, which is the nicely equipped one, and it's 38. That's why I think the Toyota RAV4 is the best vehicle on the road. Nothing can touch it. To your point, a little plastic, not a little, quite a bit plastic, fantastic on the inside. It's not sexy. It's not going to do any of that. But all those other things I just mentioned, it does them incredibly well. All right, do we have another super chat here? Once again, I apologize for my cough. I got this bug uh, several weeks ago. Lots of people in the neighborhood have it, and it's uh, just a lingering thing that won't go away. But anyway, um, there's Scott's. Hi, looking at buying a Lexus, either a NX350 or LX350. Not sure if hybrid is a better idea. We don't drive all that much. Any thoughts? Better to order one. Use prices are crazy right now. Um, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the LX350. I don't think there is an LX350. Yeah, get the get the I think you mean the RX350. Is that what you mean? Um, I would get the NX350H. That's the hybrid. Wonderful product. It's incredibly uh, bulletproof. It's the RAV4 hybrid system that I just talked about, but it's in a Lexus, and then they put in a bigger electric motor. So they take the electric motor that is in the RX, bigger electric motor. They put it in the NX, so you get more snap, more more, more responsive, uh, quicker, all those sorts of things, but you still get incredible fuel economy. So all the stuff I just mentioned about the Toyota RAV4 hybrid being a great deal, the NX hybrid, the 350H, is the one that um, you want to... Hello, come on in. How about those Seahawks? Did they win? OT win. What about the Bills, Jack? And there you go as well, but two wins. I need the Lions to lose. Uh-huh. Sorry, the Lions to win. Seahawks are in the playoffs. So if the Lions win, the it, are, the, are the Lions capable of winning? They're 8-8. Eight eight. Oh, okay. If, so, the if the Lions, if the Seahawks lost and the Lions had won, the Lions were in the playoffs. 
Okay, so when do the Lions play? 10 minutes. Okay, all right, let us know, there Jack. You there you go, there's your sports update. Uh, the Bills won, that's my team, Super Bowl. You know they're, you know they're going to the Super Bowl. Um, and Jack's all about the Seahawks. So if the Lions win, they make the playoffs? I think that's what he just said. All right, there you go. <laughs> and then the Canucks, they the Canucks blew it in the third period. I was watching them this afternoon. Um, we have another super chat here. Do you think the Chevy Equinox Premier is a good value? It is a 1.5 turbo, a reliable engine. Okay, so as much as everybody craps all over Chevrolet, and especially the Equinox, the actual data out on this car is really quite strong. And it has been for many, many years. So Chevrolet Equinox is a vehicle that JD Power covers that is always indexed above the industry average when it comes to quality. So um, I have no problem recommending it based on that. It isn't the sexiest. It isn't that refined on the inside. In fact, the interior is really quite dated. But if you can get a good deal on one, I say go for it. The numbers are there and they back it up. JD Power, if you go and look, year after year after year, Equinox is right near the very top in terms of quality scores. Now I know a lot of people hate it. I know a lot of people dump on GM. I know a lot of people dump on Chevrolet. I know a lot of people really crap on the Equinox, but the numbers just aren't there. So there you go. So if you can get a half decent deal on one, go for it. All right, back to where I was. Where was you, Zag? Okay, let me catch up. Here I was. Okay, ID4 versus Nero EV. Which is good family vehicle for long term? Okay, so the, the Nero um, is just a front wheel drive. So that's going to compete with this uh, VinFast VF6 and the Chevy Bolt. So if you look at the Chevy Bolt EUV, so there's the Bolt and then there's a the slightly bigger version of it, more crossover-like. Um, the Bolt can't be touched when it comes to value. Um, now the ID4 is much more expensive and the ID4 also has the ability, uh, the ability to go with all wheel drive. So it really comes down to, I'm not sure where you live or what you need, but um, I think the new Kia Nero EV, they did a great job on it. But if it was my money and I was buying an electric small city car for a family, I would get the Chevy Bolt. Here's Josh. I had a reservation on a 23 Prius limited all wheel drive. We only uh, buy the top trim until I realized the CRV Sport Touring was basically the same price. No brainer. Prius is way too expensive loaded. Well, um, if you want to save even more money, you can get the RAV4 hybrid, and that's cheaper. Um, I think, Josh, I think you have the uh, Toyota RAV4 Prime, so you're in the chips. Not sure why people liking RAV4 apart from being long-term reliability. The cabin noise and performance is not on par with expectations. In fact, Outlander with a gasoline engine is doing better. Listen, if you want to, yes, the, the RAV4 can be uh, noisy with the regular gas model. Um, the hybrid makes it a better vehicle to live with, for sure. Back to my point a while ago. When you start adding up everything that it offers, and then you look at um, what they charge for it, it's actually a good deal. Um, you know, they don't charge a ton of money for a RAV4 hybrid. That's why it, that's why it sells so well. Does the Honda Civic engine feel underpowered for a daily driver? If so, can Civic turbo engine be considered a reliable engine? If you're looking for reliability, the base 2 liter is the one to buy. We have a Honda Civic and we intentionally bought the base 2 liter engine. It is fine as an everyday commuter car. It is not setting the world on fire. It's not a sports car. It's a sporty handling car. It actually handles really quite well. It's got independent rear suspension. It's got a nice seating position, good steering feel. <coughs> Excuse me. 
but it's not a powerhouse. You've always got to remember it's a balance of what they're trying to accomplish. A good everyday commuter car and then add in a good fuel economy. So um, if you're looking for long-term ownership, the two liter is the one to buy. Just buy it and sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. It's not exciting, but it's adequate. I would say it's adequate. And the reason we bought a Civic is it's just perfectly slow enough for teenagers to learn to drive on. <clears throat> what do you think about the 2024 Kona? Have you looked at the pictures? I've only seen the pictures. You know, everything they do just seems to be... Um, better and better or more interesting anyway hyundai and kia vehicles always are interesting uh, after watching many of you uh you were in andrea's videos my wife and i finally bought an xt4 premium luxury suv thank you so much for a great review of some com subcompact luxury suvs big fan of the cadillac big fan of cadillac generally actually there's another brand that people crap on and they just don't know the numbers are in general motors and cadillac's favor general motors has I think more vehicles, well, there'd be Toyota in there, but as a brand, General Motors, because Toyota has Toyota Lexus. They used to have Scion. But Buick is right at the, right near the very top of quality. Chevrolet is or as well. Cadillac Index is above average. Um, so those are the main ones. I think GMC is below industry average. Probably something to do with something with their trucks. Um, but there you go. Cadillac, I think, is doing a lot of things right. John Burke, are you getting the GR Corolla anytime soon to review? Yes, that's another one we're waiting to arrive. Here's Julian. Uh, despite all my all the economic indicators, I pulled the trigger and traded my GV70 for an MDX Type S. Your video helped a bunch. Thanks. Well, you're jumping from one one good car to a great car that mdx type s is fantastic now it's expensive but it doesn't really have any competitors if you watch the video on the mdx type s that's the higher performance version of the mdx and you start looking at what it kind of really competes against it doesn't really have any competition it is 350 horsepower 10 speed automatic transmission um, it's got the adaptive suspension it's got the better brakes it's got great handling. <coughs> it's got all of that, a really nice interior. Um, it's a unique, unique product. So I'd love to hear your thoughts after you've had it for a while and if you think you made the right choice. But I personally would take an MDX Type S over a GV80, for sure. <clears throat> Are white cars harder to get than all other colors. I'm currently waiting for an RX 350H to arrive at my dealership. All caviar black was offered to us instead of my wife's once the white one. I'm not sure. Um, I don't think so. I don't think colors really have much to do with it. You got to know that when cars go through the factory um, and they go through the paint booth, basically, or the paint component of the factory, um, they have they have the jets that they change for all the different cars. So a blue one will go, then a red one, then a white one, then a black one, then a gray one, then a purple one, or whatever it is. And each one is different from the other, and they can switch it that quickly. So it's really not got to, anything to do with the production of the vehicle. It probably has something to do with uh, the popularity of that particular model in that particular color. Because the white one is the one that they promoted as kind of like their Halo launch vehicle. So the RX and all the video that they supplied to us when we drove it, all of them were white. So I would suspect that um, you're not the only one that's ordering a white one. That's my guess. For the next several weeks with the NFL playoffs, are you going to put the Q&As on Monday? No. <laughs> Stick with what we got. Um, all right, I just want to make sure I didn't miss any super chats because people pay for those. I don't leave anybody hanging. I think we got them all. There you go. Okay, well, I apologize for this cough. If you think it's bad today, you should have heard me two weeks ago. It was really bad. Uh, it is slowly, slowly getting better. Um, 
but yeah, um, maybe someone in your house or somebody you know has had the same bug. Uh, my doctor uh, said, oh yeah, there's, there's loads of bugs going around. Everybody's wearing masks for two and a half years and now nobody's wearing masks. So all these viruses are going around. So it's not COVID, it's something else, but it's been no fun. But anyway, we soldier on. Hopefully I'll be uh, better next week. We'll find out then when you tune in. Don't forget, if you want to get a picture in, it's Zach at Motormouth.ca, Z-A-C-K at Motormouth.ca, or Z-A-C-K at Motormouth.ca. Uh, this week we have the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. That drops on Wednesday. I love driving. Every time I get a chance to drive an Alfa Romeo, I'm like, yes, I love them. That's another vehicle that is, you know, maybe some headaches in ownership, but is it worth it? Yeah, I think so. What a great, what a great vehicle to drive. Um, and then we have the Chevy Bolt. I'm excited to get that back because it's been about a year and a half since we actually our video came out, and the very next week they did a stop sale on them because of the fires with the batteries. So it was really crappy timing when our video came out. Anyway, that's all being cleared up. They're now for sale again. Excited to get the Bolt back. I'm a big fan of the Bolt. I'll see if I'm still a big fan of the Bolt after this week. So that's all coming up. Thanks to everybody for being here. Uh, take it easy, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.